very welcome to Camogie Report podcast. Uh, as we are recording to recording this, we have three All Ireland semi finals to look forward to. Um, by the time you watch this episode, we'll know the fate of our under sixteen teams who just played in an All Ireland semi final against Galway, and we'll be only days away from a massive two adult semi finals. Our juniors are in Ashburn this Saturday, July twenty second, uh, against Ross Common at twelve pm in Ashburn. And that's the first of a double header of junior all Ireland semi finals. The second game is Clare and Armagh. And also on Saturday in Nolan Park at 3 30 pm, our seniors take on uh, Waterford in the Glen Dimplex all Ireland semi final. And that game is followed by uh, Cork and Galway in the other semi final. So, really exciting times here for Tipperary Camogie. How brilliant it would be to have two teams in an all Ireland final uh, on the first weekend in August. Can we dare to dream? Uh, that is the dream. We have the juniors and seniors, both in all Ireland semi finals, both there on Merish, uh, both in flying form, and with massive tasks ahead against Ross Common and uh, Waterford. Looking ahead to the junior team, um, Ross Common, just looking at their group games, they had two wins over Tyrone and Loud and lost to Clare. Um, they came second in the group. They played Limerick in the quarter final, had a three point o- win over Limerick. Remember, we bet Limerick in the Munster final uh, a few months back. So they bet them in the quarter final 13 points to 1 7. Tipped then, obviously, we topped our group. We bet Wicklow uh, at home in the rag, and then we went went to Cavan and recorded a great win there. Got a direct route to the semi final. So have been without a competitive match in a couple of in a couple of weeks, but uh, um, have been playing lots of challenge games, preparing really well and uh, are going to be all guns blazing for Ross Common on Saturday, that game at 12 p.m. in Ashburn. Uh, our seniors then, a uh, great win over Antrim in the quarter final, comprehensive victory there. Uh, we, we topped our group with wins over Dublin and Wexford and that draw against Kilkenny. Um, we got pulled out of the hat though to play a quarter final and we got the job done against Antrim and we're now facing Waterford a team that bet Cork in the Munster, first round of the Munster Championship. We bet them then in the Munster semi-final before going on uh, to be clear in the Munster final. Um, great, healthy rivalry between Tip and Water for the last couple of years. They bought us last year in the group games. So this game is going to be um, a real, uh, a serious battle. It's going to be a cracker, I think, in Nolan Park. It's the first game of a double header there, a Tip and uh, Waterford at 3.30pm in Nolan Park and Cork and Galway in the second game so to help to look forward to these games to build up the atmosphere to get the thoughts and uh, analysis uh we have Stephen Gleason um from the Tipperary Star and Tip FM commentator and uh we also have David Sullivan joining us and uh, the Tipperary junior manager so I'm delighted now to be joined by uh Stephen Gleason of Tipperary Star and sports commentator Stephen you're very welcome to the podcast Thanks very much, Geraldine. Thrilled to be here. Stephen, uh, I was with you um, last Saturday in Crow Park. We were doing commentary with Tip FM uh, on the quarter final. I know it ended up, I suppose, a one-sided game, but looking back in the match, what were the key, I suppose, positives you would take from a, from a Tipperary point of view, I suppose, heading into an all Ireland semi-final against Waterford? Well, Geraldine, I think you mentioned it that day on commentary as well, just the fact that it was Crow Park. It was a team playing a match in Crow Park, finding their feet, getting their bearings, and of course, so importantly, getting that win under their belt. And it was a game that Tip were slow enough to settle into, I thought. You know, they're a bit jittery. The ball wasn't sticking to hand, it was spilling out, and it was taking them a couple of attempts to rise the ball at the start. Antrim looked to just kind of gain a bit of confidence from that, and it was level, you know, at the quarter mark in the match up by half time tip were starting to get on top but it really did take that second half and that first 15 minutes of the second half to see off Antrim and uh, one of the key things I thought was just getting used to those surroundings getting used to playing there that's the big time you know that's what it's all about and this team haven't really had that opportunity Geraldine I can remember working years ago in, in uh, Phoenix FM above in Dublin and interviewing Jerry Tarnley of the Irish Times, a rugby correspondent. And I remember him talking about the, the almost the emotional intelligence of a team. And that doesn't 
come overnight. That's something that takes years and years to build into. And this Tipperary team have been building for this. I think they've been building for this for maybe five, six years. They lost, you know, a couple of key players in Orlo the wire going to the Aussie rules. And a couple just fell by the wayside. But the bones of this team have been there for year after year. I was doing commentary with you over the years. And uh, we've seen them just lose against Galway, lose against Kilkenny and lose against Cork. And this time round, they're in a semi-final. They have a brilliant opportunity. And they got there in real style this time. The way they beat Antrim the last day was that second half was just a big punch to say, this is our stage. We're on the big time. We want this more than anything. And uh, and the fact that they got that win in Crow Park, they go to the Kenny next in Nolan Park. If they win that, they're back in Crow Park for the final. I think that's going to stand for them big time should they get there. And uh, look, they're in that semi final. They've, was it eight, or, eight out of nine? They've lost um, of the last nine years. They didn't get there last year, but uh, to be back there again, I think it's a golden opportunity for Tipperary now. And it's just all the cards have fallen nicely. So that's the big thing I would take from Crow Park. Getting a win and playing well was huge, Geraldine. And so do you think then, just adding to that, the fact that Warford went straight to a semi-final, didn't play a quarter final? do you think that quarter final game, the extra game for Tip will, will stand to Tip? Oh, absolutely. The way they won it in such style, you know, I mean, that's a lovely position to go into because uh, Dennis Kelly then will still feel you know, they can do better because the first 15 minutes, you'd find it hard to pick which team was better because Antrim were really well in it. And um, was it their, their free taker sent one over from the number six position all the way over the bar, all the supporters from Galway and Limerick from the hurling that were in early to watch the match were cheering on Antrim. And, you know, they were the underdogs going into it. But they were they were well in that game. 15 20 minutes and then Tipperary just went up a gear and by the time the second half started they were going up three or four gears and it was a completely different match the last 15 minutes compared to the first 15 minutes so I think they'll take a lot from that and still Dennis Kelly will have a lot to say to them you know you need to do a lot better than this you need to be uh, starting a match well because you could be killed off in the first 10 minutes a couple of goals could go in and it's it's very hard to get that back against the top quality side but um, it took them a while to get into it but when they got started they were unbelievable and one thing Geraldine I thought it was one point and I, I remember we were on commentary and uh, nearly jumping up when Karen Kennedy got a ball in around the centre back position and she soloed all the way up to the centre forward position with the ball and Antrim had no option but to drag her to the ground and concede a free because she was going in for a goal. Now, Tip got a point out of that, but they could easily have got a goal there with a run from the centre-back all the way up the field. And I think she really woke up a lot of those Tip players who weren't playing that well up until then. But um, after that run and that point, you know, she was on form. And after that, a lot of them kicked in and found another gear and... Uh, it was a completely different match, I thought, in the second half. That's how I felt about it. Yeah, I was just thinking there, I know after the game, you interviewed Caught the Van, and one thing that stood out to me is what she said was that at half time, the management came in, they showed them the stats, they weren't happy with the stats, the stats weren't up to the level the other games had been at. And I was just thinking afterwards, or I don't know if you thought about what, what particular, particular stats do you think she was referring to? Was it the hooking and the blocking and the work rate, I wonder, that wasn't there in the first half? Yeah, I'd say that as well. Um, that's really the thing. Tip were just second to the ball. They were spilling the ball. Antrim were going in and, and winning that 50-50 ball. It was all going Antrim's way for the first maybe 15 minutes. Tip upped it after that. But um, like the stats at the end of the day are going to just basically say that you're not performing to your optimum ability. And what can we do? to get you performing to that. And that's what a lot of those are about, just that you play well. So I would say the stats were along those lines. And knowing Dennis, he has a lot of uh, you know, time put into management, a lot of thought put into coaching. And uh, he's got good people around him now. It's a top-class setup there, you know, to be able to just produce those facts 
you know, in that moment as well. It just shows that the players and the management are thinking on a, at a really high level in sport. Um, you know, that was the reserve of rugby teams and it was the reserve of, you know, quality soccer sides years ago. The GAA has really, you know, gone up a big notch in terms of hurling. And I would say maybe Cork and Kilkenny and Galway were there in Camogie. Tipperary are at that level. Isn't it brilliant to see that, you know, that, that she has that in her head? You know, that's where we went wrong because it's the pure facts of I made two tackles in the first half. I hit four wides. You know, what was I doing? How can I improve on that? I should have passed that ball when instead I decided to have a shot, even though it was a 40 60 opportunity. So I think that Tipperary are thinking in, uh, you know, real winning mentality type of mode. And, uh, geez, I, I think it's brilliant to see the, the level they're at. And the strength and conditioning of the team is phenomenal as well. So when they're talking about that at halftime, it's all those little things. It's that work rate. It's putting in the hooks and the tactical tackles. And if Tip get those things right against the quality sides, they're going to be really hard to stop. And uh, it, it is really gone up to a new level in Camogie, I think, at the moment. And Tipperary are, are leading the way this year. And uh, geez, it's fierce exciting journey. Yeah, and I, I think, um, you know, we talked about the slow, slow sluggish start. And obviously that's something that we can't do against Antrim in an all in semi-final. But I always feel when you're playing the better quality sides, you do start better, you're tuned in. And, you know, against Antrim, like we were red hot favourites, everyone's expecting it to win. It's sort of nearly easier to prepare against the, the better, stronger sides. And, you know, for a lot of people, this is a 50-50 game in the, the semi-final. A lot of people were saying it's a great draw for Tipperary, but Waterford people are thinking it's a great draw for Waterford too. We were avoiding the big guns of Cork and Galway. You know, you get one chance of them and probably thinking, you know, get a win over Tip and we'll be ready for Cork or Galway in a final. So it is a great draw, I suppose, for Tip and for Waterford. But I wouldn't fear a slow start against Waterford. I think the girls will be all guns blazing for this game. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. Waterford will be thrilled to get Tipperary, you know, nobody there um, wanted to draw the winners of Kilkenny and Cork and nobody wanted Galway. So Watford will say, great, it's Tipperary. Um, we owe them one because they beat us in the Munster Championship and, uh, you know, we had knocked out Cork. We had done the hard work for Tipperary. Yeah. So like Watford will be thrilled to get Tip. And likewise, I'd say a lot of the Tipperary people will be absolutely over the moon to get Watford. Because uh, Galway just have a, you know, that hoodoo over Tipperary the last few years. And uh, Cork are a different animal now. They've got uh, Thompson back and they've got, you know, real quality players now across the field. So I think it's a different Cork animal now. And the other two in the draw are definitely stronger than Tip and Washford. But the reality is either Tip or Washford will have a shot for them in the final. And um, that's just dreamland territory for those teams. So Watford will go into this, you know, fancying their chances as well. I mean, they have a lot to prove there. Tipperary beat them well in Munster and uh, Watford probably didn't perform well that day. They have good players in the likes of uh, Neve Rocket there, who is a, an outstanding forward, you know, really sharp, real good quality player. And you've Beck Carton there as well, very experienced, a bit like caught the van almost, a bit of a leader there and around for you know, the best part of a decade as well. So I think that they're going to come into this very strong. There's probably um, one to 10 for Washford. Excellence will match Tipperary. And then you go 10 to 15 and 15 to 20, as in the subs that will come on. And I think Tipperary is stronger there. I think Tipperary have really strong subs. And number 10 to 15 on the Tipperary team are probably a bit better than the Watford players. So Tipperary would probably go into it as favourites and have a right good crack at it. Um, the subs for Tipperary, the last day, like the quality there is unbelievable. Heffernan came on, was a 1-4, I think she got in the second half, Geraldine. And uh, Mary Ryan came on there. What is it, nearly 20 years experience, 17, 18 years in the blue and gold jersey. To come on there in a big match like that, just, you know, that experience, you can't buy that in the team. And uh, and even the dressing room and the training ground in the next couple of weeks. So uh, I think Tipperary will start as favourites in the semi-final. 
And look, they, they should be beating Watford, to be honest with you. There's no two ways about it. Tip will be favourites and they should be winning this one. But uh, again, Watford will say the exact same thing. That's who we want and we want to get to that final. And uh, they'll probably look at targeting the Tipperary full back line and laying that ball and avoiding the centre back position where Karen Kennedy is lording it uh, all year, arguably the best camogie player in Ireland. So, I mean, if I was the Waterford manager, I'd just say avoid that half back line, get the ball into the full forward line and push Neve Rocket or someone like that in there. I mean, that's probably Waterford's game plan. Uh, tip have a few options. So when you go into it as the favourites, it's easier in some ways, but it's more difficult too because you have to perform. Yeah, and just to, to mention there the subs, I have to say I was very impressed with the subs the last day. You know, I suppose you have to take it in, in consideration maybe the second half, the whole team as a whole were playing better. Um, I suppose Antrim faded away, but definitely I thought our subs did really well and I think Dennis has a few headaches on his on his on his hands. Um, you know, a few big calls to make. You know, girls are impact subs all year. Do you start them? Um, or do you keep players for impact subs? Are some players more suited to be impact subs? Or have you one shot at beating Waterford and getting to an All Ireland final and you put out your I suppose your best fifteen informed players at the moment? Yeah, they're complex questions, you know, and your season lives or dies by the answers to them um and i would say like heffernan it's hard to see better forwards than her there so do you want her on the feet to start um is she stronger coming in like she did the last day come in just after half time and and win ball after ball and drive it on um friday is another one that's been coming on the field there quite a bit and doing very well um you know the, the knock, those Knockavilla players are, are, are quite powerful, I think, for Tip. But um, like I, I can see maybe Mary Ryan being held in reserve and possibly the others. But I would say Emer Heffernan will really challenge the forwards for Stackenberg uh, the next day. But if you're looking at that team, you're looking at Roisin Howard, nailed on starter, I would say. Um, Mar as well. And you've caught the van up there. And, you know, Claude McIntyre live wire she's going to start as well so where do you fit them in you know that's the the big thing because everyone is performing at the moment so um dennis kelly and michael franco and co are in a great place now you know i mean they have all the players playing well and Geraldine, i think we talked about it as well afterwards the munster final victory that was just like this weight just seemed to lift off tipperary and um even talking to keen tracy about it that day, it, it, we sensed it would happen, that Tipperary would just be a new team to get silverware to know you have a medal presentation this winter, even if you don't win any more matches. I mean, that's a brilliant feeling for them um, after going so long without winning anything. And those players now are playing with confidence. They're, they're brimming with energy and they are really bringing that. You know, the Antrim game, second half there, it was... Like, what did Andrew get? Five, six points in the match? It's shocking. So it is really Tipperary who are driving it on here. And the fact those subs are challenging just gives them real uh, challenges to think about in the next few days. But uh, I'd say the only one there that could possibly start is um, Emer Heffern. I thought she was really good when she came on the last day. And was it 1-4 in the second half? So I'd say... It's kind of hard to leave her out, but um, the ones that do start, if she doesn't, will know that she's breathing down their neck. So it's almost an incentive to, you know, to play well as well. If you needed any further incentives, it's just um, it's all feeding into the motivation and the drive. And I'd say these players are thinking about it morning, noon, and night. Yeah, Stephen, brilliant chatting to you, and uh, we look forward to the big game in Nolan Park. 3.30 p.m. Saturday, July 22nd, Tip and uh, Warford. And followed, following that game is the other semi-final, Cork and Galway. So should be a cracking doubleheader in Kilkenny. And we're certainly looking forward to it. Stephen, thanks very much for joining us on the podcast. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Geraldine. A pleasure. Now, I'm delighted to be joined by the junior manager, David Sullivan. David, uh, 
a massive week ahead preparing for the All Ireland semi final. I suppose it's where you've wanted to be at the start of the year. Uh, how are preparations going? Uh, it's been really good, Jordan. I suppose we haven't played a game since the end of June, uh, since Cavan. Uh, we got a boy straight into a semi final as one of the two group winners. So I suppose we've been keeping our heads down the last couple of weeks, um, training away, playing challenge games, that kind of stuff. So I look really, really anticipate next Saturday week. Obviously, we're. Um, we're, we're mad keen to get into an All Ireland final, and to do that, we have to, to win the All Ireland semi against Ross Common on the 22nd of July. So um, we've been preparing really, really hard for it. You know, we've all all 27 girls fit and healthy and raring to go. So it's just a matter now of just ticking the last few boxes and making sure we've everything sorted for the day, and then just turn up and do our business, and, and hopefully that's enough to get us over the line. Like winning the group, get put you in the position that you could go straight to a semi final. You're obviously happy with getting straight to a semi-final or are you conscious maybe of not playing a competitive game for such a long time and, you know, Ross Common having that big win over Limerick in the quarter-final? Uh, I suppose it's a bit odd really in the camogie that you can still win your group and I suppose perform very well and, and still end up in a quarter-final or, you know, so it's it's a bit mad really in one sense that way, but it's no real advantage that you can win your group but still end up in a quarter-final. So I suppose we, we dodged the bullet and we, we got straight through to the semi-final and, um, Look, I suppose you can view it two ways. I suppose we, we avoided teams knowing about us in the quarter final, and we could have managed to, you know, kind of prepare our way there for a semi final without showing our hand and that kind of stuff. But at the same time, not to be to complain, uh, playing competitive games. So, you know, Ross Common would have had a very, very uh, tough game against Limerick the last day. So they'll be coming into a semi final, you know, with a very good win and full of confidence. Whereas I suppose we we're four weeks without a, a championship game. and you know, challenge games are great and training is great, but I suppose nothing beats playing the competitive stuff where everything is on the line. So in that regard, I suppose Ross Common are probably in a better position than us, but uh, we're fairly confident. I um, haven't seen the girls in two or three challenge games in between the cabin game and the semi-final that, you know, the hunger is still there and, you know, we're working extremely hard. So we'll be more than ready and we'll have no excuses come All-Ireland semi-final there. And look, I've been following you all year and been to most of your games and, like you're on a brilliant winning streak in terms of your last two games in the league, the two games in the Munster to win a Munster final, beating Wicklow, then beating Cavan. So, like I said, you're getting the results, but I have a feeling maybe you haven't all you haven't really performed to your potential. And are you hoping that on Saturday you'll see the best performance from this group of girls? Yeah, I suppose. Look, we, as I said to you a couple of times, Jordan, I suppose we had to put a lot into the league because. You know, we wanted to stay there for next spring and be a part of the Intermediate League in, in February and March of next year. So that took a lot of energy to, to stay in that league. And the Wexford and Galway games were massive games for us in, in March and, and April. And I suppose we put a lot of emphasis on that to stay in Division 2 for next season. And there was always going to be a dip in our form. And I suppose the Munster Championship, we were very disappointed, even though we won it. And I suppose a great sign of a team is that you're not playing so well, but you can still end up with silverware. And we were bit, bitterly disappointed with our performances, but delighted to win at the same time. But since the All-Ireland series has started, um, you know, without being too disrespectful to Wicklow, I suppose we always knew we were going to win the first day at home in the rag, considering that, you know, they had got a big beating by Cavan the day before that. So I suppose we... we we kind of managed that game and I suppose the Cavan game then was the one we really targeted because they had come down to us last year and obviously they'd beaten us by a point in the rag and that was sore enough for a lot of the girls on the panel, you know, so to lose at home to Cavan last year. So we put a huge emphasis on that and, you know, we played really, really well in Breffley Park and I suppose it was kind of it was back to our normal form again and back to the form that we showed at the tail end of the league and, um, you know, we seem to be peaking at the right time now. We've played very, very well in a couple of challenge games since and, you um, we seem to be coming again in the right vein of form at the right time. So we're just hoping we've timed our run well now. That's kind of the biggest thing with all teams at this stage of the year, that you've kind of designed yourself around timing your run and making sure that you're at your peak power at the right time. So look, we'll find out Saturday week whether we've timed it right or not, but we feel very confident in the 27 players that the work we've done. Um, you know, the girls will go out in Ashburn uh, next week and, and perform to the best of their abilities. And if they do that, I'd be fairly confident that we'd be able to get over the line and, and, and look forward to an all the final in the August Bank on the weekend. And how brilliant it would be to have a Tipperary team and playing in the all Ireland final. Uh, you know, we dare to dream, possibly even having two teams. So that's what's ahead of Tipperary. Um, I suppose you have had the advantage of being able to go and watch Ross Common. Um, you know, they had a great win over Limerick in the quarter final. I suppose, is there a few main things you've taken from that or... What are the kind of strengths that Ross Common will bring to this game on Saturday? 
Yeah, I suppose the, the one thing that stuck out the last day in Clane was their work rate was was, was immense. You know, they, they followed Limerick all over the field in numbers and, and won back the ball quickly when they didn't have it. And um, I suppose they have some really, really good hurlers. You know, Sarah Dooley there, wing back, and the two midfielders, Orla Connolly and Rachel Fitzmaurice, are very good hurlers as well, very direct runners with the ball. And I suppose they're one of the best players I've seen in the Junior Championship this year in Sean O'Fallon, wing forward. Um, you know, she scored 12 points the last day, so from freeze and from play. So, you know, we'd have to work very, very hard in training for the next week or so just to make sure that we're, we're laser tight and in regards not giving away freeze anywhere in the scoreable position because she did punish Limerick the last day and I suppose at times kept Ross coming in the game and she was the one contributing factor maybe that got them over the line. So if we can manage to keep the free count down close to our own goals and um, just kind of match their energy all over the field and their work rate, I would hope that maybe when it comes down to a battle of hurling that maybe our skills and stuff would be a little bit ahead of theirs. But to get to that point, I suppose we just have to match their energy and their work rate and commitment from the word go and not let them settle into the game. And if we do that, please God, then as the game wears on, that we'll be able to wear them down and let our hurling take over from there. And look, Dave, I suppose we can't talk about the junior championship today without giving Jean Kelly a mention She's been on fire there, really has her score in boots and has raised a serious amount of green flags for you in the two games. Uh, I suppose you'd be hoping that form continues into the All Ireland semi final in Ashburn. Of course, yeah. Look, sure, Jean is Jean is a superstar, really. Like, but uh, it goes just more than more than Jean. Like, you know, we're we're not really putting huge emphasis on any one player at all. You know, we kind of have some very, very good forwards up there. Claude Horgan has scored heavily as well over the two games. And, you know, Aoife Dwyer has been very effective as well, as is Kier Brennan and Claire Stakel and Aoife Milan. You know, they've all contributed there, Ellen Keneen. So it's not just Jean, I suppose she's getting the standout moments because she's raising the green flags and that kind of draws the most attention. But, you know, we're not really just relying on one player. You know, we're kind of putting an emphasis on on a forward unit up there from midfield up to get the scores. So while Jean has been standing out, the other girls have been a great supporting cast as well. So I do expect that to continue on the 22nd of July, that it's it's not just a one-person show, that, you know, we have seven, eight, nine girls there who are well able to register scores on the day. And we'll, we'll need that, you know, because I've no doubt they'll have their homework done and they will probably be very tight on Jean on the 22nd of July. So... We will need other girls to stand up and maybe raise the green flags the next day and, and, and get us through to that all Ireland final. And I know, David, I suppose we've seen a lot of, you know, some personnel and positional changes in your starting team so far this year. Mm -hmm. I know you have huge experience as a manager and along with the management team, you do lo loads of research and homework into the opposition. I, do you kind of set up your teams sort of to, to match who you're playing and, and, you know, set out maybe, you know, get your matchups right and players in different positions it seems to be a lot of flexibility within the girls as well and able to play in different positions yeah well i suppose look we we, we took the step after the lead to, to let go of some members off our panel and i suppose the, the members that we have kept on the 27 girls we've kept on we feel very comfortable that any given day we can play any of those players and you know i suppose we we've tried our best in the week law and the cabin game to give as many girls a start or a, a going in the group stage, especially after we win the week game and week coming for us we probably knew we could afford to do that anyway so we made a lot of changes from the month to final to the week game because we had a lot of girls coming back from injury and stuff like that and uh i suppose the cabin game the last day then we made a couple of more changes but i suppose the reality is when You've so many girls training so hard since last November, it's hard just to keep with the same 15 all the time that you have to try and be flexible and trying to give girls game time as well to keep them interested and coming to the field. So it will get serious from now on and we'll, we'll have to nail our colours to the mast in terms of what our best 15 is. But, you know, certainly any time we played any girl in the blue and gold jersey Tipperary in the junior campaign so far, be it the Munster Championship or All-Ireland Series, they've all held their hands up and they're all pushing really, really hard for a place. So... Uh, it will be a difficult decision for us, but, you know, look, we'd have to take into account what, what, Ross, what will Ross Common do and what they did the last day. But at the same time, I suppose we had just have to concentrate on ourselves because we've worked very hard on the game plan all throughout the year since last November. And, uh, you know, we're not going to abandon that now just to concentrate on what Ross Common are doing in an All-Ireland semi-final. We'll try and fit what they're doing into what we're trying to do as well. So... I suppose the key thing is getting the personnel right on the field from the start. And like we've always done then, spring the options from the bench. And our bench has made a huge contribution every day since they've come on. And, uh, you know, that's kind of the mentality we're trying to build inside in the squad that it's not just a 15 player uh, game anymore, that we need 20 players every day or maybe 21 or two with blood subs, depending on how the game is going. So uh, we're, we, we were our squad primed for that kind of uh, mentality. And uh, we will need all 20 players again the next day to get us over the line.
Great stuff, David. David, I, I missed the game in Cavan. Uh, I was raging to miss it, so <laughs> I'm really looking forward to, to heading up to Ashburn and watching you against Roscommon. You know, it's a fantastic group of players, great management team there as well. And uh, I know there's big things coming for this for this team and just to wish you the very best luck. Uh, it's just a reminder that game, uh, by the time this podcast goes out, it'll just be a couple of days away on Saturday, 22nd of July, um, 12 p.m. in Ashburn. It's a double header with the other semi final, a big game between Clare and Armagh to follow in Ashburn. So, David, uh, I know you're an ambitious guy. I know at the start of the year you set out your stall. You wanted to bury Kamogi uh, to be in an All Ireland final. You, you believed in this junior team and you're 60 minutes away. So, the very best luck on Saturday um, uh, against Ross Common and uh, just to wish you the very best luck and all the girls. And uh, we'll see you in Ashburn on Saturday. Thanks very much, Tony. Now, just to preview the senior game, I'm joined by Limerick Senior Camogie Manager, John Lillis. John, you played Waterford this year, they were in your group. Uh, I'm sure you were impressed by them. Yeah, very, very impressed by them. Look, we got to play them twice in the league and the championship. Um, where they were in the league, they were miles ahead of us and then we thought we might catch up, but they're an exceptional team. Um, way improved than what we played last year in the All-Ireland quarterfinal. Added a lot to their management, their backroom team, and a few new players, their conditioning. Um, they're just a super outfit uh, the day we played them down below in Capamore yeah like they have a new manager this year but do you think they've progressed since that well comparing them to when we played them in the stadium last year in the all Ireland quarter final they've come on so much um, their whole positioning their set up their organisation everything has just gone way beyond anything I've ever seen from Waterford before um, they found a few players as well and they're actually performing quite well without their, their main woman Lorraine Bray at the minute who, who's missed a lot of it through injury and Tip played him in Munster Championship. Obviously, it recorded a big win over them. But it probably was probably the best thing that happened to Warford. They seemed to have, you know, maybe got their act together even more since then and refocused on the All Ireland Championship and, you know, have recorded three big wins so far. Well, to be fair, when they came through Division 1A, uh, 1B of the league, sorry, they hadn't played one of the top teams. Um, probably got it too easy in the league. First good game they had was against Tip. They found their feet after that. And their championship performances so far has been a marked improvement on that day that we saw when they played Tip in the Munster semi-final. Uh, and obviously the big talk point is Beck Carton. You know, we hear people saying she's unmarked. Well, how did you find her that day in the championship? Uh, Beck Carton is an outstanding player. Um, we probably had our best player on her that day and we just couldn't keep her tied down. She was all over the place. Her shooting was phenomenal. I think she scored over 100 points so far this year, which is outstanding shooting if any device had done it. They'd be raving about her. Um, at the moment, she's extremely fit. She, her touch and everything is marked improvement on last year. How to stop her in the, in the Saturday week is going to be the thing for, for Tip. Um, are you willing to sacrifice one of your top players to try and keep her? Um, if I was in that situation, that's what I'd be doing. If we stop Beck Carton, then you're on the way to winning. Not guaranteed to win, but you're definitely on the way to getting a win. And do you think she's more likely to play in the half forward line or in the full forward line or just to rotate? She starts out centre forward but she floats all over the place. She moves out to midfield, picks up ball inside the inside line, out to the wings. Um, she doesn't stop moving. Um, it's very, very difficult to tie her down. So you might think she's standing here, two seconds later she's in a different position, she's picking off a score. Now the day we played her, every shot she hit went straight over the bar. Um, it was phenomenal. Her speed for her goal was just left every one of our girls for dead. Look, she's one of probably the top player in the country at the minute. So Tip will have to do their living best to keep her quiet. And John, I don't know if you've seen too much of Tip this year. I know you're busy with Limerick. Um, but from what you've seen or you know what you know of Tip, how do you think they can go, will go on Saturday? No, I'm very impressed with what Tip are at at the minute. Their, their movement, their ball skills are, are, are top quality. Look, they've been pushing for the last number of years and finally they're starting to to hit performances game after game and not just performance here and then a, a down and an up um, very consistent look I think they have a great chance they're in it they're in the last four um, what will happen on the day depends on who turns up in the right frame of mind and whoever star player can get away from their marker will determine who's going to win the game John thanks a million no problem so that's all we have for this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast really hope you enjoyed it uh, don't forget two big games this Saturday, the Glen Tiplex All-Ireland Junior 
Championship semi final to Bray first Ross Common at twelve PM in Ashburn in Mead. And then at three thirty PM in Nolan Park we have Tipperary and Waterford in the All Ireland senior semi final. Uh, wouldn't it be great if we had two teams true to an All Ireland final after this weekend? That is the dream. Thanks very much for listening and we'll talk again soon.